DDR1. DDR1 launched in 2000, and if you think RAM is confusing now, imagine this. Before DDR1, computers used SDRAM, memory so slow that opening a program felt like waiting for a dial-up modem to connect. DDR1 changed that. It stood for double data rate, meaning it could transfer data twice per clock cycle instead of once. Suddenly, your PC didn't crawl. It walked. Back then, 256 megabytes of RAM meant your PC was a beast. Today, your phone has 8 gigabytes. DDR1 ran at about 2.5 volts, used 184 pins on desktops and around 200 pins for laptops. You could spot it easily, one notch right in the center. Speeds ranged from 200 to 400 megahertz effective, with bandwidth topping out around 3.2 gigabytes per second. It showed up in early Pentium 4 and AMD Athlon systems. Each stick usually maxed at 1 gigabyte using a 2N prefetch buffer, which basically meant it could grab two chunks of data per clock cycle. The downsides? Higher power draw, limited capacity, and heat. Your RAM could double as a hand warmer, but it was a massive leap forward at the time. If you built a PC around 2001, chances are your RAM was louder than your case fans and costlier too. A gigabyte of DDR1 could easily hit $100 back then. Today, you'd pay that for 16 gigabytes of DDR4. Times change fast. DDR2 DDR2 arrived in 2003 with a promise. Twice the speed, half the power. Sounds perfect, right? Not quite. Here's the weird part. DDR2 was faster on paper, but sometimes slower in real use than DDR1. Why? Higher latency. It could move more data per second, but it took longer to start moving it. Think of it like this. DDR1 was a small truck that started moving instantly. DDR2 was a bigger truck that took longer to get going. For quick tasks, DDR1 sometimes won. For heavy loads, DDR2 crushed it. Voltage dropped to 1.8 volts, pin count went up to 240, and the notch moved slightly off-center. That notch movement was intentional. It was so you couldn't accidentally jam DDR2 into a DDR1 slot and completely fry your motherboard. Trust me, motherboards don't appreciate attempts that are close enough. Clock speeds doubled, from 400 MHz up to 1066 MHz, pushing bandwidth around 8.5 GB per second, over twice what DDR1 offered. DDR2 also introduced 4N prefetch, meaning it could grab 4 chunks per cycle. In real terms, PCs felt smoother. You could finally run multiple browser tabs without your system freezing like a statue. DDR2 powered the Intel Core 2 Duo and early AMD Phenom days, the era of Windows Vista and questionable desktop wallpapers. But higher latency sometimes made it slower in practice than DDR1 at the same clock. It was a weird upgrade, faster on paper but not always in daily use. Still, efficiency improved, heat dropped, and capacities hit 4 gigabytes per stick. By mid 2000s standards, that was huge. If you're curious, DDR2 is long dead today. You might still find dusty sticks in office PCs from 2007, right next to the printer nobody wants to replace. Then came DDR3 in 2007, the memory that defined an entire decade of gaming PCs. This was the era of Minecraft, Skyrim, and League of Legends, games that defined a generation. If you built a gaming PC anytime from 2008 to 2015, you probably used DDR3. Boot times dropped to seconds, games loaded without the please wait screen, and multitasking actually worked. It ran at 1.5 volts and 1.35 volts for low power versions, kept 240 pins but shifted the notch again to stop mix-ups. Speeds ranged from 800 to 2133 MHz, pushing bandwidth beyond 17 GB per second. It brought an 8N prefetch buffer, new flyby signal routing for stability and support, up to 16 gigabytes per stick. It powered Intel's legendary core i5-2500K and i7-3770K. CPUs so good, people still refuse to upgrade from them. Even today, a DDR3 system can handle 1080p gaming and basic editing without breaking a sweat. It was also legendary for running hot enough to cook eggs. A 16 gigabyte kit today costs around $25 to $35, making it perfect for budget or retro builds. But if you're editing 4K footage or gaming with modern GPUs, DDR3 becomes the bottleneck. It'll work, but you'll feel the lag. If you're still rocking DDR3, comment below why you're holding on. I'm genuinely curious. DDR4 
DDR4 launched in 2014, but here's the dirty secret. Nobody cared at first. Why? Because DDR3 was still fast enough. Early DDR4 was expensive, barely faster, and required new motherboards. Gamers ignored it. Reviewers called it unnecessary. But then something changed. AMD launched Ryzen in 2017, and suddenly RAM speed mattered. Ryzen CPUs were hungry for fast memory. The faster your DDR4, the better your performance. That's when DDR4 went from meh to must-have. Voltage dropped to 1.2 volts. Pins jumped to 288 and speeds exploded from 2133 MHz to 3200 MHz, then 3600 MHz, then beyond 4000 MHz for enthusiasts. Prices dropped. Capacities hit 128 GB per module. By 2020, DDR4 was the undisputed king, and it still is for most people in 2025. DDR4 also brought bank groups, which let memory process tasks in parallel, plus CRC error checking for better stability. This wasn't just faster RAM, it was smarter RAM. In the real world, DDR4 easily handles 1080p and 1440p gaming, smooth editing, and even light 4K work. It's the sweet spot for most users right now. As of today, you can find 16 gigabyte kits for around $40 to $60 or 32 gigabyte kits near $80 to $100. Still great value. But remember, DDR4 and DDR5 are not interchangeable. The notches and voltages differ, and each needs a compatible CPU and motherboard. Then in 2021, DDR5 arrived. Built for the new era of gaming, AI, and 4K or 8K content creation, it dropped voltage further to 1.1 volts, kept 288 pins, but moved the notch once again to prevent confusion. Base speeds start at 4800 MHz, but high-end kits now hit 9600 MHz plus, offering bandwidth north of 38 gigabytes per second, almost double DDR4. DDR5 introduced dual sub-channels within each module, meaning it can handle multiple data streams at once. It also features on-die ECC for error correction and power management ICs built directly on the stick, smarter and more stable under heavy load. Capacities are massive. Consumer sticks go up to 128 gigabytes, while servers can hit 512 gigabytes per module. That's more memory than most people will use in a lifetime. Real-world use? For gamers, DDR5 can improve frame rates slightly in CPU-heavy titles. But the real benefits appear in video editing, 3D rendering, and multitasking. Price-wise, 16 gigabyte kits start around $80 to $120, and high-speed kits can expect $200. If you're building a brand new PC with Intel Alder Lake, Raptor Lake, or AMD Riser 7000, DDR5 makes sense. Otherwise, sticking with DDR4 isn't a crime. Your frame rates will thank your wallet. Here's the quick breakdown. DDR3 to DDR4. Yes, if you game, edit videos, or use heavy software. DDR4 is far faster, more efficient, and modern CPUs no longer support DDR3 anyway. DDR4 to DDR5. Only if you're building new. DDR5 needs a new motherboard and CPU, so upgrading just the RAM isn't possible. DDR5 to future DDR6? Relax, that's years away. Enjoy what you have, or what your credit card just paid for. If you're ready to upgrade and want to skip the endless review rabbit hole, I've got an Amazon link in the description that takes you straight to the best-selling computer memory. It's always updated with current prices and top-rated options, so you're not looking at recommendations from six months ago when half the kits are out of stock. Check it out. It'll save you hours of research. Common mistakes and myths. Myth 1. Higher megahertz equals always better. Not necessarily. Beyond a point, faster RAM shows minimal gains unless your CPU and workload actually benefit. For gaming, latency often matters more than raw megahertz. Myth 2. You can mix different RAM speeds. Technically you can, but all sticks will run at the speed of the slowest one. It's like running a relay race with someone wearing flip-flops. Myth 3. RGB makes it faster. Nope, it just makes it prettier. You'll get zero extra FPS, but 100% more glow. Myth 4. DDR4 works on DDR5 boards. Nope again. The pin layout and voltage differ. Always check motherboard specs before buying. Myth 5. More RAM equals always better. Only up to a point. 16 gigabytes is ideal for gaming. 32 gigabytes for heavy creators. Anything beyond that is bragging rights unless you're running servers. Final wrap-up. Every DDR generation built on the last, 
lower voltage, higher speeds, and more capacity. For most users, DDR4 still hits the sweet spot. Affordable, fast, and supported. DDR5 is the future, but only worth it if you're building new. And if you're still on DDR3, it's time. Your PC has earned retirement. At least now, when someone says DDR5 6000 MHz CL36, you won't stare blankly. You'll know exactly what it means and whether it's worth your money. Now, here's the thing. You just learned how RAM speeds up your system by giving your CPU quick access to data. But there's another storage component that's even more confusing. Your SSD. M.2, NVMe, PCIe, SATA, AHCI. If those sound like random letters instead of real tech, you're not alone. And here's what nobody tells you. Buying the wrong SSD type is worse than buying slow RAM, because you'll feel it every single time you boot up, load a game, or open a file. In the next video, we're breaking down every SSD type in plain language, what each acronym actually means, which one's fastest, and which one you should buy without overpaying. Click it now, and I'll see you in the next one.